Good morning, people. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you might be joining us uh, from. Welcome. This is the Teleric R3 2023 release webinar, our last big release of the year. Uh, for a lot of the products, we do you know continuous releases, but we try to stack up three major releases in a year. And um, uh, we are here to cover all of the things for web, mobile, and desktop, particularly for our .NET uh, friends and audience members out there. Um, so welcome once again, and uh, let's do a quick round of introductions here. Uh, see my mouse is working. Okay. So we are Sam and Ed. So Ed, my friend, how are you? How you doing? Doing good, Sam. Good. Yep. All right. So Ed and me are both, um, uh, you know, developer relations. We are both uh, stateside. Um, uh, Ed's in Kentucky. I'm in Pennsylvania, but we know you folks are all over the world. So thank you for giving us a little bit of your uh, time. Uh, we know you're busy. We will try to make the most of it. Um, while you see and hear the two of us through the webinar, uh, there are a lot of folks in the background that you don't see. These are also the folks who actually build a lot of the amazing things that we're going to show you. So uh, we're going to talk you through this. Uh, this is your time to ask us any questions um, so you can get the most out of this. So you can reach us, uh, Ed and me, uh, anytime after the webinar as well. So let's talk about developer productivity. Let's talk about your success. You know, it's uh, probably coming close to the end of the year. So you might be on a tight uh, timeline trying to deliver your projects, or maybe you are spinning up something big for next year already. Uh, you want to be successful. You want to be not spending as much time in reinventing the wheel, uh, but, you know, doing the things that you need to make your app more, uh, you know, usable more feature rich for your users. So we are here to enable you with all of the UI uh, capabilities, all of the testing, reporting, uh, all of the things that make uh, developers more productive. So let's let's dive into all of that. Uh, each release, we do kind of have a theme um, and the, the broad theme here is again, developer productivity. We are doing a lot on the design front as well. Um, I'll talk about what uh, you may have missed yesterday, uh, but we are very conscious of the developer designer, you know, um, bridge and try to make that as easier as we can. So there's a lot of work that we have done on the design front. On the UI uh, component story, we are, you know, pushing as hard as we can for all things .NET. You're going to see us do bleeding edge things with uh, the latest in .NET and, you know, .NET MAUI, Blazor, all things ASP.NET, WPF, WinForms, all of that is what we are going to cover today. And you're going to see a lot of love that's been poured in uh, for the last, you know, several months. On the JavaScript front, we have you know, brand new components uh, across Angular, React, uh, Vue, and jQuery, a lot of security enhancements. So we are kind of all in um, with this release. So this is what we are doing this week. Um, and this is what you may have missed uh, uh, you know, yesterday if you are just joining us. We did a whole webinar on just all things JavaScript, right? So we have a huge component library for Angular, a huge one for you know jQuery and React and Vue. So our good friends covered all of the JavaScript goodness. That was all yesterday. And again, the recordings uh, should be up uh, pretty soon. And this is today. This is for all of our .NET friends. Uh, Ed and me like saying that we are old because we have seen .NET kind of from its infancy to you know what it is right now. It's you know open source. It's productive. It's welcoming of everybody. And there are a lot of different you know frameworks and you know technologies within .NET itself. So uh, you know our customers and all of you folks you know choose the things that make you more productive for the apps that you're trying to build. So we're going to cover all of those things. Ed is our resident web expert, so he's going to start things off with all things web. Uh, Blazor is obviously, um, you know, the hottest new thing, but the reality for a lot of you is also ASP.NET AJAX or MVC or, you know, Razor Pages or Core. So Ed's going to cover all of that. Then I take over uh, in the, you know, second um, hour of the webinar uh, when I talk about all things mobile and desktop. So that means a lot of different things, you know, .NET MAUI and Xamarin for mobile folks. Uh, a variety of technologies for desktop, you know, starting from WinForms to WPF to WinUI, how all of these things are coming together. And you can see us, uh, you know, pouring in investments. So whichever stack that you choose, you have the right tools uh, to be successful. So all of that's coming up today. And then tomorrow, uh, we are not going to forget about the things that make enterprise workflows click. It's not just about UI. It's a lot about testing and debugging. It's a lot about reporting, and it's a lot about you know everything else that makes developers productive. So we're going to talk about you know all of those things coming up tomorrow, uh, Friday. So that's the plan for this week. 
it's a lot. And if you are interested in what exactly happened, because a lot of the times, you know, um, you might be using one uh, particular product from us, let's say UI for Blazor. You might not know that it's a part of a bigger family. We call it DevCraft, which is a suite of all of our UI tools. And many of you likely already have the DevCraft bundle. So, you know, it just sparks some ideas that you might be able to use something else. So if you want to see, a, you know, an overview picture of what are all the good things in this release, check out blogs.hillary.com. We take the time to, you know, write up what's new in every single product. And maybe um, you might find something else that's going to be useful for what you're trying to build. So check out blogs.hillary.com. And throughout this webinar, uh, Ed and me are going to cover a lot of things. We stand on the shoulder of giants, our engineering folks, our PMs who build all of this cool stuff with you. Um, and um, we will try to cover as many things. We'll try to do, do, you know, do justice. And the Q&A panel is here. So ask away questions, okay? There are folks here who are you know, ready to answer your questions. If you would rather ask questions on social media, use the hashtag #HeyTenerik. So we have a breadcrumb way of following up with you. We are recording this in you know, high def. So if you need to run or something drops with your connection, uh, you know, be assured that uh, you can catch up uh, later as well. So let's dive in. Um, and like I said, everything that we are showing off today with our R3 release. All of the bits are out. So I know you take uh, you know multiple routes to get the new bits from us. A lot of you still like to use the control panel, which is a nice placeholder for all of the things that you have from us. A lot of you go through NuGet, and a lot of you go through you know npm packages. Whatever you know floats your boat, get the hot bits, and that's how you're going to see the you know latest functionality light up uh, that Ed and me are going to cover today. And for all of the things that we're talking about today, which is fundamentally ASP.NET. Uh, Maui, WinForms, WPF, we are sitting on top of .NET. And, you know, Ed and me really like this slide because it's, you know, it's modern. It's not your old school .NET anymore. It lets you build and, you know, reach just about every platform. The tools of our trade have come a long way. It's just, you know, Visual Studio across the you know board. You have multiple other IDs as well. Uh, it's a just genuinely a nice, open, welcoming ecosystem with lots of goodness all around. So um, you're in a good place. So we are going to build everything on top of .NET. We're not going to forget .NET framework or earlier versions of .NET, but you're going to see us uh, kind of go all in with the bleeding edge and .NET 8 stuff, um, you know, release candidate 2. We've got support for that already. So, you know, choose your .NET and we are, you know, right here to make you more productive. And for whatever we do, you know, we are all about, you know, the developer experience. If you are struggling, then we are failing. So please talk to us. We pour a lot of love and care in the docs to make sure your developer experience and journey doesn't struggle. But if you are, you know, <clears throat> curious about how to do certain things, um, there are lots of demos to kind of help you out. Uh, there are demos that show you, you know, how to do stuff. There are demos which are very in-depth. So check out all the demos uh, that you can, you know, get open source or you know, download on your local machines. And if you are needing something that you just don't see, talk to us, feedback.tillery.com. I can assure you the product teams take a look at every single one of your comments. So if you want us to build something, talk to us and we'll schedule that for the next you know, few iterations. So that's uh, that's just a little bit of housekeeping for the first 10 minutes. Uh, let's dive into all things web. And this is where Ed takes over. And Ed's got a lot of different things to cover, a lot of goodness that's been poured in. However, uh, before we hand it over to Ed, we want to make this a little interactive. We have a quick little poll for you. Um, and we'll we'll keep on asking you more questions as we go along. But you know, just some standard stuff. You have a lot of choices as a .NET developer. How are you building web apps today? Like, if you are maintaining an old school, uh, you know, web app, what are you doing to move things forward? Or if you are starting a new web app today, what are you using? Is it Blazor? Is it ASP.NET MVC? Core? Web Forms? Or none of the above? It's always fun for us oh, to right. see where you folks are at. Look at that, All the Blazor fans out there. Yeah, nice, I've already nice. seen some Blazor questions coming in chat. That's a, it's nice Wonderful. to see. Wonderful, very good. And, uh, you know, this is actually really good to see that, you know, uh, Blazor is understandably exciting for .NET developers because you get to do C Sharp front and back. And, you know, what's not to like about, you know, being able to build spa applications, being able to build, uh, you know, uh, RESTful services or, you know, server connected apps. It's modern for every type uh, of web apps. But again, a lot of you are still with uh, ASP.NET and MVC and Core. Nothing wrong with that. You can, you know, start bringing in little, you know, islands of modernness uh, with your web apps. 
So with that, Ed, how about I give you the floor and you show us all the cool things with web. All right, folks. I'm going to talk about all things web and what I mean web, I mean all of the uh, .NET web stuff. Uh, as Sam mentioned, we had our Kendo UI webinar to cover all the JavaScript aspects of the things we do. I'm going to cover all the .NET web things that we do, and that includes UI for ASP.NET AJAX for the web forms developers out there, um, UI for ASP.NET MVC and Core. I like to kind of combine those together. They're about the same feature set, but if you're on Core, you can uh, integrate more of the uh, tag helpers and modern .NET uh, like .NET 7 and 8 and so on, uh, and even some Blazor in there. So combine those components together, we'll talk about those. Then we'll move on to Blazor. Uh, we'll have a quick chat about .NET 8 release candidate in .NET 8 support. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Theme Builder as well. And all these web components that we have are easy to theme, and we have a new Theme Builder tool that helps you do all of that. So we'll we'll give it a quick glance. Uh, let's start off with Telerik UI for ASP.NET AJAX. Uh, we had a couple new components in this release. Uh, you know, the Telerik UI for AJAX is one of the uh, longest running uh, component libraries that we've had, and we still are adding new things to it. Uh, brand new avatar component, uh, two new charts, the vertical area chart and the vertical line chart. And uh, chart improvements just across the board with uh, label positioning, um, step properties, and much, much more. So make sure you check out all the data visualization stuff in all of the libraries, but uh, on web forms, we got some additions here as well. I also wanna mention some uh, end of life support stuff that's happening uh, before we move on. Uh, so .NET 3.5 through 4.0 support ended after the last uh, uh, service pack for that um, the AJAX project product. So R2 2023, our last um, release webinar that we did, there was a support package that came out after that, and that is the end of support for that version range. So it's time to get at least up to 4.5 or 4.8 for the newer versions of UI for ASP.NET AJAX. Let's take a look at a couple of those components that I just mentioned for the Telerik AJAX library. We have that new web forms avatar component. And what's nice about this is it follows suit with the rest of the components in the library being totally customizable. So if you wanna take um, your avatar, you have that nice headshot, you wanna add to a profile on your, your web app, something like that, you can easily match it up with the theme of your website um, just by changing a couple properties. Of course, you can change the size of this as well. Uh, you can make it large, you can do something custom. Um, you can also set the outline and fill modes of these. So you can turn the border on and off and you can see that nice uh, outline, but uh, transparent fill mode there. And of course it supports um, some text and icon uh, properties as well. So in case you don't have a uh, photo uploaded, you can either replace that with the initials of somebody's name, for example, or just a generic icon. But again, totally customizable to meet all of your needs there. Uh, we also have the vertical area chart, which is a brand new component for AJAX uh, this release. And we have the vertical line chart as well. So again, taking care of all your data visualization needs in web forms. Let's move on a little bit to talk about all of our um, modern .NET products. And uh, it's important to mention, uh, Sam was talking about, we're always on top of the latest and greatest things. And we're supporting the .NET 8 initiative with uh, support for release candidates, previews, and of course the release coming in November. So the latest uh, release candidate two came out in October and we support that version. If you're uh, wanting to use uh, the latest and greatest bits with your applications. You can install .NET RC2, .NET 8 RC2 and give it a try and try it out with our components. 
Uh, there's substantial Blazor improvements in .NET 8. So if you're looking for big performance improvements for Blazor, uh, those are coming in .NET 8. So it might be time to kick the tires, give this um, this release candidate a shot, see how it, it uh, works with your product that you're working on. And of course, we'll continue to support .NET 7, .NET 8 as Microsoft ships new features. Um, we've also been working on our content security policy support, and you'll see that highlighted through some of the updates today. Uh, we are working on making sure that your applications that are using the Telerik UI libraries um, are safe from HTML injection flaws and those type of things that um, are enabled by turning on strict CSP support. And uh, we have new templates and things in the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core that are going to help with this. We'll get more into details on that as we go, but this is something that we've been focusing on uh, this year to make sure you have that security support from us. So new in Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC in Core, we have the brand new Doc Manager. And I'll show a demo of what this component looks like in a live view here in just a moment. But if you're building any sort of user interface that needs dockable panels, for example, you're, you're wanting to build an IDE-like interface, something like a Visual Studio, or maybe an Office-like application where you need to pin certain panels to uh, your work surface, um, this dock manager is going to help you with that. We also have a new pyramid chart. You'll see a lot of data visualizations today. Uh, we've added a lot of data viz stuff to all of our products and ASP.NET Core and MVC have the brand new pyramid chart. And we've got some options there to customize as well. And then uh, we have some customization enhancements for the scheduler component. Uh, we have the custom toolbar, uh, date picker got the adaptive rendering mode. So if you're accessing this from mobile, you've got better uh, user interface for picking dates and times for your calendars. And um, tab strips got uh, templates as well. Uh, again, with that CSP compliance that we're working on. PDF viewer got several enhancements as well. We've got improved scrolling capabilities um, and updated rendering based on uh, the latest designs of that. Uh, the grid got several improvements as well. So we've got a dedicated context menu that you can use when you highlight a row and uh, right click on a row inside of the data grid. Um, improve selection and multi-selection on mobile de devices with touch interactions. Again, we're trying to get um, all of that support into mobile devices. Uh, your apps are being used everywhere on tablets, on phones. Want to make sure that we're supporting you there. And then we have a new changing event that you can tap into as well. So let's take a couple, uh, look at cup, a couple of these live inside the browser. Uh, hey, Ed, first, yeah. Just so, if yeah, you can questions. just pause for just one second, yeah. So uh, I'm going to combine a couple of questions here, which may have already been answered, but I think it's good for uh, the bigger audience to know. I think uh, Ben Drafta is asking a couple of questions here. Um, so um, folks using uh, Razor Pages uh, with uh, .NET Core, folks using MVC, um, should there be a big rush to you know move on to newer things, or are we enabling them to keep on building apps the right way? Um, I don't know if there's a rush. If you're on ASP.NET Core already, I would say um, there, there's not a real rush to do anything uh, as far as choosing between those and Blazor. But I will show here after the Blazor demo, uh, we'll, we'll take a quick tour of what you can do if you're a DevCraft uh, license holder and you want to explore different opportunities with the UI space. Maybe you want to add some Blazor to your existing uh, .NET application, or maybe just mix in uh, uh, some of these different um, view uh, view engines that we have in ASP.NET Core. Yeah, I, I love the mix and match story because in a lot of the times when we talk about modernization, it's it's difficult. You have to think about ROI. It's not like one big push to modernize everything. 
maybe you can take like bite-sized pieces. You can start bringing in a little bit of modern, you know, uh, UI components in your apps. Uh, okay, so keep, I've keep got going. a great project for that, and uh, I got it loaded up in Visual Studio here. We can show off after we kind of give an overview of all the things that are new. I can't go into too much detail on on the demo, but I will say that I will be going into detail on all of that in uh, the upcoming .NET Conf in um, uh, November when .NET releases. We're going to have a .NET conference uh, that is free and uh, live on the Microsoft, uh, what is what is their platform called these days, Sam? Uh, where they stream, uh, where, we'll be on Twitch, but they also have their yeah. platform as well. It's, uh, um, yeah, there, there are several shows, they have an on.net, there's Learn, Microsoft Learn, um, but I mean, if you just head up to the .NET Conf website, I mean, it's gonna be embedded right in there yeah. as well. Yep, so uh, we'll we'll share a link uh, here on screen in a minute for that as well. But I'll be giving a full 30-minute session on this uh, topic that we're on. Okay. All right, uh, so ASP.NET Core, if you look at the main demo site at demos.teller.com, uh, you will see a lot of these updated icons. Uh, I always go and look in at the uh, demo site for these to see what is new. Um, especially when I was a customer, this is where I'd always be going to see what kind of uh, nice new toys I got to play with uh, were going to be dropped. And you can see there's a lot of things that were updated in this release. So we're only going to cherry pick through a few things just uh, to save for time a little bit. Uh, but it's it's nice to know these little badges are there if you want to go back to demos.teller.com and check out all of the brand new things. Um, again, there was a big focus, focus on data visualization, so you'll see a lot of uh, new charting capabilities, uh, new charts, new features, and so on. This is one of my favorite. Um, it's one of my favorite because I had to build something like this before. And this was uh, back in the web forms days, you know, when I was... Uh, cutting my teeth as a developer, I had somebody come and say, uh, this this app and this data visualization you built are great, but we need to be able to drill down into these reports. And I remember at the time, the reporting uh, software we were using for web forms did not have this capability. And uh, it took several months to you know build in to the existing product what what we wanted to do with it. And now in uh, Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core, you've got this feature right out of the box. So on your charts, you can set up your data to be able to drill down into that data and show additional levels of uh, that hierarchy there. And what's nice about it is you get this uh, bread breadcrumb component that comes up and shows you where you are in that hierarchy and you can navigate in and out of it as well. So you've got a nice user interface for it and a nice responsive chart to uh, click through to the next level of data. And it's really easy to set up and you don't have to write months and months worth of code to do it. <laughs> so great new feature. Uh, we'll see this in Blazor as well. Uh, but it's here in ASP.NET Core um, and MVC for you to take advantage of. Another data visualization here with the pyramid chart. Uh, so the pyramid chart uh, has the capabilities you'd expect from um, our data visualization components. Uh, you can have um, control over pretty much every aspect here. You've got all of your labels, positioning, um, font sizes, all of that is controllable uh, through the pyramid chart component. And as you can see back on this example, you even have the dynamic height capability uh, to control the segment height and your overall space there as well. And then several options for data binding. Uh, this is the big one, I think, for this release. This is uh, a, a giant component that has many, many features that I think folks will find several uses for. I think this was something that our customers were asking for. Um, I know we have a few out there that are building um, IDE-like interfaces, and these type of um, UI components are very helpful for that. Uh, but the idea here is that we can pin 
and uh, just like in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, we can pin our panels, we can add and remove panels from this user interface, and it just makes it really customizable for the uh, end user on how they want to see the UI and uh, be productive in their workflows. Uh, and there's a ton of different use cases for this, um, and it's uh, straightforward, easy to use out of the box. Um, you can see source code examples either up on the website using HTML helpers or tag helpers here on demos.telerk.com, or you could also look inside documentation uh, for the product as well. Lots of stuff inside of there detailing the capabilities, how to use them, uh, but you have uh, full uh, control over your panes and templates and content that is inside of each of those panes. Um, as well as their state, whether they're pinned. Um, you can control individual uh, panels as well, turn on and off their pinning and close capabilities. Notice this members panel here is permanent. I can't close it, I can't remove it. Um, I can move it to other parts of the user interface, uh, but it has some of the features turned off as, um, as opposed to uh, this panel where I can pin it and move it throughout the interface and I can even remove it from the UI if I don't want to see it anymore. But this docking capability um, is just uh, really uh, intuitive, uh, something again you see in Visual Studio, uh, you now can build into your products. This is uh, this is quite something, you know, coming from a very you know native desktop world. Like I am just amazed at the kind of things we can pull off on just web apps now. I mean, you know, with a yeah. proper you know docking container, like you can build up full, pretty much a full fledged ID style or an Outlook style interface all on the web. Yeah. I mean, you can resize these. Um, personally, this is like my favorite mode to operate in is I pin most things to the sidebar and then open them as I need to see what is in there. Um, you know, then you get this full screen experience, but you have the nice fly out capabilities here. But that's the nice thing about these, Sam, is, you know, they're customizable to each end user and how they want it to, to operate with the, the views that they're used to. And uh, this, type of a interface allows for that. You know, they can uh, make each panel the size that they need for the workflow that they have. Yeah, indeed. Uh, now, quick question before you switch gears. Um, uh, Rick sure. uh, Morinus in the chat room, I may have been answered already, but do you know what's updated with the drop-down list? Updated with the drop-down list? Um, we have an adaptive mode. Uh, so uh -huh. mobile and responsive is something that we are working on with all of our libraries here. And uh, the mobile responsive capability here, let's go ahead and do an inspect. And if we go into our inspection tool, um, we can change this over to a mobile view. And now if we look at the dropdown list, oh, let's not have triggered it correctly. I might need to refresh the page to do that. There we go. Uh, so, oop, hang on, it's still loading. Let's see here, we should get, there we go. Uh, we get a nice scrollable list that takes up the user interface and it's easier to use touch, uh, you know, gestures with rather than selecting off of a, a drop down list that's gonna be kind of hard to navigate on a mobile device. This gives you a full screen uh, drop down list that you can scroll through very easily uh, using your fingers. So adaptive rendering mode on a lot of our in com input components, you'll be able to um, add that by just turning that feature on. And there should be no additional work to get that going. So if we look at the uh, source here, you can see the adaptive mode is set to adaptive mode auto. And you look at the tag helper version of that as well. And that same property is reflected here. So adaptive mode automatic. If you enable that on your existing dropdown list, you'll have that capability on mobile. 
And I particularly appreciate that because we'll, we'll talk about this a lot more. You know, modern.net does welcome uh, web technologies very comfortably into mobile apps, into desktop apps. So I don't have to do anything. I can just build an app as if it was for the web and just drop in that one adaptive mode and it starts behaving much, much nicely on a mobile device. Yeah, you can see that here on the date range picker as well. This is a, a great example of it though, because you can see the flyout and how big this flyout is when you're on a desktop device. And if we we drop down to again a mobile view of it, go ahead and refresh to make sure we get that change that we're now on a mobile emulated device. Um, you know how clunky that would be to try to open up on a mobile app. Uh, where you saw the size of that flyout menu, Sam. Now we have a nice full screen experience here where we can pick our dates and uh, we get that start and end date filled in now, um, but just with a much easier uh, to use uh, interface on a mobile device. That's one of my favorite things about uh, mobile responsive and adaptive UIs is um, they, you know, they just automatically adapt to the device that you're using and you shouldn't have to think about these things anymore uh, once you implement them. And then uh, finally, our template uh, library for the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core has grown um, in this release. And again, this is to help support that uh, CSP compliance. Uh, so these uh, templates are CSP compliant templates. So they don't do the um, in injection or uh, real-time evaluation type of things that invalidate uh, that CSP security flag. Um, so you can use these templates in our grid, uh, tile layout and scheduler. And um, they're uh, very intuitive as well. Uh, the way that you write these, if we look, um, you can use the client detail template. Um, you can also go use it as a tag helper and you'll see we have a grid detail template here. So uh, the grid detail template, we, these remind me quite a bit of how the Blazor templating model works. Um, and that's a, a compliment here because they're, they're just very easy to use, very intuitive to uh, write. So make sure you check those out and again, not only are they adding um, to your developer experience, but they're also uh, ensuring the CSP compliance. They're uh, tighter on security. Uh, so make sure you, you give those a shot. All yeah, right. Indeed. And as you switch gears, um, you know, Greg and others were asking uh, in the chat room, like ASP.NET Ajax, uh, yes, it's, you know, aging a little bit, but we still support it. It's very, very productive. Web Forms is for a lot of web developers. So, you know, keep using it, mm -hmm. but whenever you're ready, uh, start bringing in or considering a migration, you know, path to a more modern .NET. But we are here supporting it. And um, yep. Ed, you showed off a lot of cool things with MVC. Uh, but folks are asking how many of that is making over to Blazor. <laughs> um, I'm I'm sure that you will see those things coming in Blazor as far as timeline. I can't comment on that, but our program manager, Ken, he's here in chat. Um, he'd be happy to answer those questions with a little more specificity. Uh, but I can tell you when we would design these components, we design them at a very broad scale. So we design them for all of our web products at one time. So um, we're not doing you know, anything really siloed where uh, Kendo UI for React is going to get some component that none of the other libraries are going to have. Uh, you know, we design these things so uh, we can write them and implement them in all of the front end frameworks. So you will eventually see them as far as what the timeline is to receive these components. Um, that's something I, I can't be too specific on. But it's a great question. I know. I know the and, folks are out there probably wanting that uh, that layout manager. manager that I showed. And, yeah, yeah. That, that's going to be pretty awesome. And before you switch to Blazor, just a real quick question here, because I think a few fat folks had asked. Uh, the uh, The name of the person asking is Raccoon. If that's your real name, great for you. Uh, but uh, the NuGet package for Blazor is that updated as of this last release? Yes, and it's compatible with the .NET 8 release candidate too. Okay. 
All right, so go give it a give it a spin. All right, let's get into Blazor. Uh, so in this release, we have the new list box component. Here's another one of those controls I had to build by hand back in the day, Sam. Uh, these are really helpful for like organizing groups, um, setting like security policies on groups of people. Uh, I remember building all sorts of things with this type of uh, user interface. I think I built like a rules engine one time where you know, you're moving rules in and out of uh, uh, a, uh, you know, assigning them basically to um, uh, reporting or whatever it was. Uh, it's a very useful uh, UI component to have. Um, and it's one of those things that's really intuitive for the user to use. Uh, you look at it and you kind of understand right away what this is going to do for the data that's in it. Um, so you can, uh, you know, move things in and out, uh, organize their order, uh, that sort of thing, move all of them, none of them. We'll show it in the, the browser here in a moment. Um, if you need to group like uh, interactions in a button. We have the brand new drop down button component. Um, this is a great example here. You have paste, and then there's a couple options for pasting. Uh, you know, you could find a lot of uses for this, um, and it helps, you know, condense down uh, the UI so you don't have many things um, that, that have similar capabilities being displayed in a toolbar. Uh, so, super helpful and uh, new in this release. And then we've got the charts. <laughs> we've got the data viz, folks. Trend line, area, bar, uh, and or range area, range bar, and range column, and waterfall charts um, in Telerik UI for Blazor. Uh, the trend line is uh, a nice one that uh, helps you with uh, plotting out these um, trend uh, analysis that you may be doing. Um, I'll show a little bit of a demo with those uh, components as well. Uh, I also want to mention the deprecation of uh, .NET 3 and .NET 5 and Taylor UI for Blazor starting next year in the first quarter uh, release. So uh, the support for .NET 3 and 5 um, is dropping off from Microsoft and we're following suit there. Uh, this is going to let us bring new capabilities into the product as well. Uh, so there are things that started with Blazor in .NET 6 um, and to support those uh, we would have to deprecate uh, things in .NET 3 and 5 because they don't have support for uh, things like lazy loading um, and stuff like that. So looking forward to see what comes out of that transition, but uh, just to give you a heads up, if you're on .NET 3, .NET 5, uh, it's time to start looking at you know .NET 6, 7, and 8, and see if you can get up to speed with those new versions. I think the reality here Ed, is you know most of our customers, most of people that we talk to, you are either in .NET 4.8 ish mode where you're running on .NET framework, or once you have made the jump over to .NET Core. Then it gets you know you know uh, incrementally easier to get on .NET six and seven and eight. Um, so I think these are you can kind of see them you know writing on the wall here from Microsoft as well. Uh, so if you're on yeah. those, you know it's time to you know start plotting a little migration. Yeah, .NET five is probably not so bad. I think .NET three might have had some breaking changes to move forward, but they're not major like uh, like you mentioned with uh, .NET full framework moving forward to .NET. Um, what we consider .NET Core, um, but yeah, uh, getting from .NET 5 and beyond is super easy. Usually, it's just a matter of changing the .NET version that you have um, in your uh, CS Proj file or whatever type of app that you're writing. But yeah, the, it's uh, pretty straightforward these days. Uh, so you want to make sure you're up on the latest bits um, starting next year. So let's take a look at some of the Telerik UI for Blazor in the browser. And let's go back over here and take a look at that list box. Again, this is one of those things that I find super intuitive because I can take uh, all of the uh, folks that are in this list and just transfer them over here. And then we have a nice no data template showing there. And then I can come in here and cherry pick um, items to place in uh, this section here, and again, like in the past, I think I did this with like roles in a uh, security type setting where we're putting people in 
uh, you know, like editor role or whatever it was for the thing that we were building. Um, and then you could easily move them out whenever you need to change roles from them. Uh, but it's a nice, quick uh, UI for doing that sort of work. Uh, so the checkbox list, um, again, it has a lot of different options as far as uh, positioning the um, controls, um, controlling uh, the, the items in the toolbar. Uh, for example, there's a save icon here that, that was added in. Um, so multiple select capabilities, drag and drop, which is awesome to have on the web. Um, templating, so you can display icons and, and so on inside of uh, the UI there. And, um, you know, we have access to all the events and things that you would expect out of that type of component. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Uh, folks in the Q&A panel are, you know, asking a few questions. Uh, I mean, I, I see this uh, single select, I see the multi-select. Paul Shields was asking mm -hmm. about the checkbox selection. Uh, so yeah, keep talking to us if you if you don't have it. Uh, our engineering and our PMs are here, so um, bring it up to their attention. Uh, we've got lots of charting capabilities. The trend line chart is uh, one of the new ones here. Um, Again, though, I want to focus on the, the drill down chart before I start running out of time here. Um, the drill down chart, really cool. I know I showed it for ASP.NET Core. I want to go a little bit more in depth here and just say edit Intelleric REPL. You can do this on all of our demos, by the way, on the uh, Blazor side of uh, the product. So I've got the, um, the drill down chart open here. And I've got this button that says Edit Intelleric REPL. And what I want to do is just tinker with the component a little bit and see what some of its capabilities are. And I know I showed in ASP.NET Core and now again, the drill down chart. And the drill down chart is, bar, it's a bar chart, right? Uh, the drill down capability is more of a feature than it is a quote, chart. Um, we can actually change the chart type for this as well, Sam. So you can see over here on the code side, I have my chart series type as a column. Um, and then each level of data has its own chart series type as well. So I could change these based on uh, which level of data I'm at. I'm going to change this top level maybe to a bar chart and uh, run that again. And you'll see that this is now going to be a bar chart at the top level. So there's our bar chart. And if I click on one of these, um, it is now um, a uh, column chart um, as I drill in. So it depends on which level of data I'm at. I could actually go in and set those to something completely different. So this is a nice capability to add to um, some existing charts that maybe you want to be able to drill down into. And again, you can change these per level. You could come in here on this one and say, I want an area chart. We'll run this one more time. And as I drill in, we've got a bar chart now, we've got an area chart here, and then we've got a column chart there. So you can get very specific with these things. And then I, you gotta love the breadcrumb navigation to move back and forth as well. Uh, it's all built right in there. Yeah, I'm I'm back in my borough because uh, every time Ed shows off REPL for web apps, I'm like, I got I got <laughs> nothing for native apps. I can't do that. Uh, just to summarize some more things really quick here, and then I'll, I'll jump into that uh, last demo. I promise. Um, theme builder. Uh, we've got enhancements for Theme Builder. Um, I'll, I'll try to show this really quick as well. We have the ability to create variants now, uh, which is really cool. Make sure you check out the new progress design system resources too that are up on, um, on our documentation website. Uh, and then I want to mention uh, as we hand it over to Sam here in just a minute, that the laser hybrid is officially supported as well. So we're crossing into Maui territory, Sam. I don't know if you have anything specific talking about this today, but it's, it's worth mentioning that uh, you can do laser hybrid with our components and it is supported by us. Uh, so you can take your Blazor applications and go mobile with them now. Indeed, uh, speaking, everything that uh, you see from, uh, sorry, I was gonna say everything no, that you saw from Blazor, it all works uh, on, on mobile and desktop as well. 
Uh, I mean, this is nothing new, the desire to get web apps working on mobile and desktop, just the technologies and the tools are that much better to help us do this nicely. So speaking of moving things forward and you know bringing them into Blazor and Blazor Hybrid and all of these new fancy web app things, um, I just wanted to show this app off really quick. This is something, again, I'm, I'm experimenting with, uh, my personal experiment, but uh, this is an officially supported thing from Microsoft that I'm doing. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about it at .NET Conf. And uh, you see that I have our, uh, our doc manager here. So this is an ASP.NET Core application. Um, I've also got a pyramid chart and a trend line chart, uh, but there's something unique about this uh, application, Sam. This is ASP.NET Core. Uh, this is a Razor page, and this is a Blazor page, and they're all existing in one application. And the reason I'm able to do this is because ASP.NET MVC, Razor Pages, and Blazor are all part of ASP.NET Core, and we don't need separate apps to run these in, um, different types of uh, user interface models that we have. They can actually coexist in one ASP.NET Core application. So I've got a Razor View being served up here. I've got a Razor Page being served up here, and I've got a Razor component routed page being served up here. Um, I can also come into this example here, and this is a Razor component, uh, you know, Telerik UI for Blazor trendline chart, and a Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core MVC uh, chat component. So I've got my chatbot over here on the right-hand side. So what I'm kind of showing off here is the fact that you can mix these things together. If you want to take advantage of some Blazor, you can either add it in as a full page view, or maybe you have an ASP.NET Core component like this um, uh, chatbot component that's in the MVC Core uh, UI package that's not available yet for Blazor, but I want to show it alongside my, my Blazor components that I have. And you can do that in ASP.NET Core. And one more thing about this application that I'm showing, Sam, it's .NET RC or .NET 8 RC2. And you can see it's working perfectly fine here. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, you, you're, you're really mixing and matching the latest with .NET. I mean, like you said, like all of these things are essentially ASP.NET, so there is no reason for them to not coexist. Uh, I mean, here you have not just one app, it's just, you know, one view where you are, have different types of rendering. Right. Uh, so if we look at my, my app, um, you can see those things being mixed together. I've got my trendline.razor, which is my view that has my trendline for a uh, Blazor component in it. I have my pyramid chart that's using Razor pages. Um, and then I have what I call the kitchen sink, which is a Razor page that has, um, if we look here, I have this component tag helper. And the component tag helper is rendering my trend line component that is a Razor component. So that Blazor, uh, one thing that's really cool about Blazor is all Blazor pages are components. Um, not all components are pages, but all pages are components in Blazor, and I can render that individual page as a uh, single component, um, and it's being rendered server-side here. I could change those render modes, by the way, if I'd really like to. And then I also have my Kendo chat um, user interface right next to it, and they're both showing inside of this Razor page. So I can mix these things together and um, I can use this as a, as a um, they don't like to use the term migration at Microsoft because they're all on the same platform and they're all the same version, but I could use this to transition from uh, MVC and core to Blazor as a stepping stone to write all Blazor code. Um, and that's also a nice way to uh, bring in my existing Telerik UI stuff um, and, and move it forward as well. So if you have DevCraft and you have access to MVC and Core and Blazor, you can try this out um, and see how it works for your transition into Blazor. 
Yeah, okay. this is really cool. Let's see. And on, on that have... on that uh, front here, um, yeah. Ed, before you switch away from Blazor Hybrid, uh, Peter mm -hmm. uh, Larasco in the chat room was asking if uh, the Blazor Hybrid stuff. Do I need a different you know license or library? No, it's just the same. Theoretic UI for Blazor, as long as you have a uh, license for that, you can render it on all types of web apps. And uh, maybe if I have time, I'll, I'll show you off, uh, show this off one more time. We had, do have, you know, GitHub uh, repositories to show you, but you can render the same Theoretic UI for Blazor on mobile and desktop. Nothing stopping you. Yeah. The only, the only thing you would want to look at licensing for is um, to, if you're looking at the demo I just did, I had uh, UI for MVC and Core and Blazor. You'd need like a, either a DevCraft license or the license for both products. But uh, as far as like Blazor hybrid and you know wherever Blazor is going, server, desktop, that, that doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't need any special licensing there. And uh, one last time, if you want to theme all of the things that I just showed, uh, you uh, that that is also one thing that is really um, nice is the theming is uh, is uh, consistent across all of the components. It's using the same theme library to do all of the theming with. In that app, I think I um, I just use uh, the Blazor themes and apply those, and they are the same themes that go. Uh, to MVC and core as well. But uh, if you want to change those themes, customize those themes, you can go to Theme Builder and use the Progress Theme Builder. And we've added some new features to it. Um, there are some different licensing levels here. As I show this demo, you, you may need to upgrade to um, a pro version to get these features. But if I go over to Advanced Edit here, Notice it just highlighted all of the groups of components. Um, if I wanted to take, say, for example, this button, and I need this, this style of button throughout the application, but maybe there's another style of button that I want to create, another variation of it, um, I can clone it right here by clicking this button, and I could say duplicate to my uh, custom uh, class name, hit duplicate, and now I have two button component classes. Notice when I hover on this one, I get the CSS selector that it will belong to, my custom button. And I can drill into this now. And look at that, I get the, uh, the button component in its entirety, every state it has, selected, hover, active, disabled, flat, primary, secondary, all of that. And I can come in and I can change the color on it. Let's say we want to have maybe a very specific uh, red button for some case. Go back and now that uh, variation of the button is something that I can use in my application. And I can do this for all sorts of things as well. Maybe there is a, a reason to highly customize the data grid but I don't want to touch the original. Uh, I could create my custom uh, grid component and I could come in and really customize this data grid and know that I'm not going to affect uh, the other data grid um, that was already there. And then when I'm all done, I can export that by just clicking the export button and I'm going to download both the compiled CSS file and the SAS files with all of the tokens and variables uh, to create that theme using SAS. You can see I've got two folders in here with all the files to do either just straight CSS or integrate that with my SAS build um, that I have. And it's yeah, really like, about time, Sam. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to say, like, I really like the, the direction uh, that we're taking for with uh, Theme Builder. Because um, really, I mean, if you think about how many folks are starting from a existing design system, like a material or fluent, and then starting off customizing, or maybe you have a, you know, custom built in-house design system that you're building from scratch. This is a place where all of your designers can come in and say, this is how we want to look, you know, things to look all throughout your app. And then when you export, it's all one, um, you know, style that's embedded all throughout your app. So really nice uh, way to visualize all the things before you start implementing them. And I don't know how many of you get a Figma file from your designers and they're mm -hmm. like, make it look like this. Well, you can just import that Figma um, 
uh, file right directly into uh, the theme builder and then select all of your tokens from it. And uh, that that's gonna get you um, a lot closer to your goal. So you can always import styles, export CSS, and um, this is a really nice uh, intuitive tool for not only visualizing um, the theme in real time, but just being more productive because you don't have to sit here and recompile every time you make a change to something. Uh, it all happens in real time. Uh, you know, you select color and it's just automatically applied to the entire theme. You can see it right here on the page. Uh, there's an undo feature as well. So I just changed that to blue. Um, and uh, there we go, undo. Need to be focused on the thing that I just changed, but uh, just control Z there. You can't really see that on a stream, but it went right back to the color it was when I, when I uh, did the undo function. So, that's yeah, the lots of lots of good stuff. Yeah, there's way more features than I can go over in a, a few minutes here. So make sure you get on uh, the website and check it out. Uh, Sam, I think I'm going to start cutting into your time if I don't give you control back here. So uh, no, I think I mean before we move off, I think uh, I was going to say like it looks like no matter and and there are questions in the chat room about, you know, MVC and Ajax. So no matter where you are in the timeline with ASP.NET, I think the overall message is it, it is ASP.NET. You can mix and match and we will enable you to be productive with web forms and MVC and Razor. Uh, folks were uh, asking Ed about uh, your demo of mixing uh, those two things together. I think that's coming up in .NET Conf and uh, Ed, if you want to, you know, push that out uh, as an open source, uh, you know, sample, then, you know, folks will really appreciate that. Yeah, I think we have an official one that's being shared in oh, cool. uh, by some of our support yeah. folks. So it's probably best to go look at that one as I work on this one for .NET Conf and get it, um, get it all tidied up, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of uh, chatter in the chat room, which I'm sure you can get to when I'm covering stuff. But uh, Alex Kugerman had a good comment about uh, you know us doing things live, and they're they're helpful. Uh, it all the downside is Alex, you sometimes do see us fail, but that that's all right. It's part and parcel of being you know being a developer, and we do uh, uh, do a lot more of this live stuff. I mean, Ed and me are you know often you know on uh, you know Twitch live streaming uh, as we code things. Sometimes some weeks we, we just cannot because we are on the road, but otherwise we love to, you know, get with our audience and, you know, build something on the fly. All right, so anything else, Ed, that you want to cover on the web side of things before we switch gears? No, I think we're we're ready to hand it off, Sam. I don't know if we have another Q&A to do or... What uh, what no, that's coming up with uh, uh, with my sessions. And one last question, and uh, I will I will get to this as well. Looks like you know multiple people are asking. Uh, Lauren um, was asking. Hold on, you're trying to switch to my screen. That's fine. Um, let's go back to the Q and A one more time here. Uh, uh, last question here, Lauren. Do I need um, uh, a Maui license to get to the Blazor hybrid stuff? Uh, the answer is no. You you, you can uh, so our Maui suite, which I'm going to talk about, that's all native controls because uh, that's what's you know going to power your iOS, I you know Android, Windows, and Mac OS uh, native apps. But if you want to bring in Blazor, then you don't need Maui. Then you can just do Blazor hybrid. And if you have a license for Teleric UI for Blazor, you know have at it. Uh, you know we don't mind. Um, okay. So there is uh, some mix and match functionality there too, though. If you wanted to have one of the Maui components in addition to some of the Blazor hybrid or oh, Blazor yeah, components, yeah. Okay. Um, I think DevCraft covers that scenario. Indeed. All right. So Ed, I'll let you uh, attend to the chat room a little bit more or the Q and A panel while I switch gears and. Ed and me are always fighting about this. I understand how ubiquitous the web is. Our browsers are like a VM. It, it just does everything. But I'm just going to say, look in your pocket, look in your phone, and just see how many of your apps are native apps that you have downloaded from the app stores. Or look in your enterprise workflow, and you're going to see a lot of desktop apps that's powering your everyday workflow. So native stuff is important. Uh, so let's switch gears, but I mean, so is web. Uh, it's, it's a good thing that we can all, you know, kind of uh, live together nowadays. So let's switch gears to mobile.
how do you build for mobile? It doesn't always need to be a native app, but you know, how do you target uh, mobile form factors per se? So let's switch gears to that. And I'm gonna start with .NET MAUI because this is clearly the way forward. So .NET multi-platform app UI, it's come a long way. We have been on this journey with Microsoft from .NET 6 early days, uh, you know, uh, tooling was rough, platform support was a little rough, but you know, here we are two and a half years in, things are very matured. So some of the benefits are obvious. You are now able to target uh, mobile apps and desktop apps uh, all together from a single truly single shared uh, you know, code base. And that's really nice. Your resources, your styles, your images, your fonts, uh, everything is shared between where, uh, you know, mobile and desktop, which is really nice. And .NET MAUI right now, uh, production is .NET 7, uh, but it's getting very ready to run with you know, .NET 8 come this November. So, I mean, so are we. Uh, so, you know, the benefits should be obvious. It really is the cross-platform strategy going forward. Uh, great uh, UI architecture, easy ways to customize your controls uh, on each platform. And obviously Blazor and other web frameworks are also welcome. So the benefits should be obvious. Uh, and you know, uh, the large platform reach is really nice. So before I go into what we have in store for you uh, with .NET MAUI, a quick poll here, just to make sure you all are uh, not sleeping, right? Just a quick poll to uh, understand where you folks are at. So. Dr. Maui lets you target all of these frameworks, but do you have a preference? Like, are you still building for one platform first and then maybe reaching out to the others? Uh, so iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. And the reason we ask for this is we are seeing customers in every, uh, you know, uh, on, on both sides of the fence here. We have folks who are very much in the mobile space and they're coming from Xamarin. So for them, iOS, Android is the thing to do. But then there are folks who are building brand new desktop apps with Maui and they don't care about mobile all that much. They just wanted to go Windows and Mac first and then maybe add on uh, mobile at a you know, different point of time. So if you were to do a .NET Maui app today, what would you be targeting? Mobile first or desktop first or mix of both? Uh, oh, look at that. That is interesting. That is interesting. 76% of you are Windows. And I don't think I'm surprised because, uh, you know, if, if you look at the overall stack for how do you build Windows apps today, you have had a whole plethora of choices over the years, right? I mean, we started from WinForms and WPF and UWP and WinUI. And while all of them are, you know, legit, and that's quite, you know, a, a remarkable feat that we can run all of those platforms on .NET 8. If you are going to start a Greenfield desktop app today, I would recommend .NET MAUI. So it's interesting to see, you know, how many of you are on the Windows and, you know, Mac OS uh, both. Uh, and again, folks who are doing iOS or Android, you're likely coming from Xamarin anyways. Uh, so that's good to know. It's, it's a mixed, uh, uh, mixed bag. All right. So like I said, we have been on this journey for, you know, three plus years here with Microsoft uh, working through. This was one of the first UI suites you could get and still is one of the biggest and most comprehensive suites you could get. Uh, so a lot of our engineering love and care goes into uh, enabling .NET MAUI developers. So what's in store for you? What exactly is this suite? It's just, you know, growing really, really fast because this is where we spend a lot of our time. So this is for all of your mobile and desktop apps. So the benefit here is you pick up a UI suite from us, uh, you get a grid or you get a chart from us that you want to render. You don't have to think about how it renders. We take care of the adaptiveness. We take care of making sure it renders right on Windows, Mac, versus iOS or Android. And that's not something we take lightly because it's vastly different. The UX is vastly different. Just because you have a single true code base doesn't mean the user experience should be the same across all platforms. So we will work with the latest .NET MAUIs. If you are you know, on .NET 7, if you're on .NET 8, uh, we will work with you. Uh, we do have written up quite a bit of content on how to migrate. So if you look at the Xamarin stack, you have maybe until next year to move things off. And again, just because support is dying doesn't mean the platform is dying, but I think most of our customers are wanting to move off. So there's a lot of help uh, in, in terms of migration as well. When you look at uh, what the Tedarik UF for MAUI Suite does for you, it's not just UI components, it's also your productivity. So we have a you know toolbox that lets you drag and drop things very easily. We have templates. We are trying to come up with, you know, most often used screens with that we can help you with. So 
you know, there's a lot of help. And if you want to be on the bleeding edge, we are right there with you. So what is new? And again, uh, these things take, like good engineering is one, it's not inexpensive. And two, it takes a little bit of time to get things done exactly right. And calendars are, you know, uh, notoriously difficult uh, across iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. So we took the time to do things right. We did a calendar last release, and we have a scheduler, which is, you know, the natural extension of how you want to use a calendar across devices. So we have a brand new scheduler component, works seamlessly across mobile and desktop. I would love to show you that. Uh, it's meant for all of your calendar needs. Think about predefined views, different types of, you know, day views and hour views and week and months, uh, all, you can customize all of that. You can do all types of appointments, uh, special time slots, uh, special like time rulers based to, you know, based on where you are in a certain day. Globalization, localization support, uh, you can style things. So a full blown scheduler for desktop, for mobile, it's now ready and out of the box for you in Telerik UFR Maui. All right, we have a navigation view. This was requested because what's in there, uh, what's built in can be a little clunky. Uh, there, are, there are like app shell and other things, but uh, there are some difficulties in the way it works and the difficulties in the way data binds and especially how it renders between mobile and desktop. So we thought we would, you know, uh, start from scratch and do a real, you know, professionally made hamburger menu, uh, you know, from the get go. So works seamlessly across mobile and desktop. Uh, it's it's a classic, you know, organizational paradigm that your users don't have to learn how to do. It's just, it's obvious, it's very intuitive. And it's meant for those top level, you know, page navigational things. Uh, it's a great way to organize, uh, you know, if it's a really busy desktop app, um, this is a great way to organize. You just tuck, just tuck it away and it's very customizable, like how it opens up, how it animates. Uh, you have item hierarchy. So maybe within a top level item, you have, you know, multiple child uh, items, uh, different types of display modes. Maybe you want the positioning to be on the right hand side or on the top or the bottom, uh, a settings menu. So all of that is very doable and it's just a very, you know, flexible UI component that's meant for organization and, you know, navigation between you know, different parts of content. So navigation view is, it's all done. We have a brand new range slider control. This was uh, heavily requested by some of our enterprise customers, especially if you're building desktop apps. Uh, you know, you have different types of, you know, numerical ranges that you're trying to choose, or maybe you're trying to, you know, come up with like a booking app, a travel booking app, you're trying to, you know, select between prices. Uh, no matter what be your user use case, like you need a slider UI. So essentially you're trying to choose a range within a bigger range. And there are this like min max value that you can choose. The intuitiveness of this is the user can drag either the start or the end either way, or if you can just use your, you know, one finger and grab the slider and just move it, then you're changing the start and the end values simultaneously. So works with touch, works with keyboard and mouse. Uh, and it's got all the features that you expect, you know, so dragging and different types of ticks, different types of labels, tool tips. So like you can see in that example, uh, you know, telling the user as they're going exactly what they're doing uh, and being able to style it exactly the way you want. So range slider, oh, wow. it's in and done. Yeah. Ed. I like being able to drag the selected range. That's a pretty cool feature. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've seen that in the web or not. Yeah, maybe we're doing it first for native here for once. Uh, but again, I mean, you can see the use cases for, you know, variety of uh, ways in which you're trying to customize your searching capability. All right, so data grid. And again, uh, we don't say this lightly. Uh, we have, you know, enterprise folks that we are working with who are rebuilding, uh, let's say a WPF app or a WinForms app that's been out there for 15 years. And it's extremely complex. It is super busy. And now you're trying to do all of that in .NET MAUI from scratch, right? Now, if you're coming from the Xamarin world, this was not something you are used to. Your data grid is kind of simple. It's meant for mobile workflows, but now you bring in desktop and you demand all of this complexity that you are used to from WPF and, and WinForms right inside of your .NET MAUI. For the first time, you have a data grid from us that works seamlessly across mobile and desktop. Again, 
not something we take lightly because it takes a lot of engineering to do this right. So there are lots and lots of enhancements across the data grid in this release. Uh, too many to mention uh, all in one screen, but I'm just going to uh, mention some of the bigger ones. Uh, so we have things like frozen columns that we have done. This one we are very fond of. It's called row details, and it's you know such a classic use case. You have uh, you know a grid that's showing you uh, you know a lot of information across rows, and then the user wants to tap and expand each row and see some additional contextual information. So it's kind of a container. You can put whatever you want inside of it. You expand and you show that extra information. Now, with this, I will say, just like Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. You have to understand that, you know, if you bring in 100,000 records on the client side and you bind it to a grid, and then when you pop open each row, you have another, you know, 50,000 records and a grid, another chart, it's gonna start taking a toll. So just be careful with what you're doing. It's enabling you to do exactly uh, a grid open and a row detail open functionality, but beyond that, it's it's up to you. Uh, and we'll try to do our best with virtualization to keep performance uh, you know, uh, on the spot, smooth scrolling and all of that good stuff. Uh, you can now actually do a little hover UI uh, on the column headers if you wanna give your users some extra you know, details and uh, keyboard navigation. This is particularly tricky because uh, uh, the platforms are different. WinUI, which is how we are getting to Windows, that has its own stack of doing keyboard and mouse. And Mac Catalyst, which is how we're getting to Mac OS, that has its own stack. So we are doing keyboard navigation consistently across Windows and Mac now. So a lot of enhan enhancements across uh, the data grid. Uh, more things uh, across, uh, again, a few other controls. Uh, again, we don't have the time or the space to mention all of them, but combo box, uh, we are doing the additional spacing between the combo box where you're typing versus where the drop down, you know, pop up, pops out. If you are doing a thing where you can start typing and then erase, like there you have a clear button. Now you have a event that you can subscribe to, or if you're doing commanding support, we can do that. The PDF viewer, which is for you to render a PDF and be able to see it across, you know, uh, iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. Uh, we can render all types of PDFs with full fidelity. Now we have text support, uh, text search uh, support in there, so you can find and highlight things. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more. This is for you to render and be able to view the PDFs across all of .NET MAUI platforms. If you want to actually edit, create, and actually, you know, build PDFs on the fly. We have a whole document processing library that does that for you. Tree view UI gets a new load on demand because again, you are bringing a lot of data to the client side. We want to help out uh, with load on demand and virtualization. Toolbar, again, you're now building very realistic and complex desktop apps with .NET MAUI. So uh, there is a toolbar that lets you have all of that complexity kind of tucked away for the user. There are new input fields. And if you are doing like a search, we can do a busy indicator as well. So it's almost growing up to be like a ribbon uh, and letting you, you know, add all types of functionality to the user on top of, you know, other controls that you might have. Image editor gets some updates as well. So enhancements all through uh, .NET MAUI. All right, so overall, if you wanted to take a look at .NET MAUI, you can uh, not trust any of the things that I'm saying, okay? I will show you exactly how you can get these things, but we have a lot of sample apps, uh, so you can see the UI before you try putting it in your app. So uh, if you want to give this a try, we have a wonderful control sample, which I'll show you. We give you the source code for all of it. There's a crypto tracker app. There is an SDK browser app, which kind of shows you how to do those you know, specific and unique ways. All of that source code is out there. So if you want to be inspired by how we render some of our UI, you got uh, plenty of inspiration uh, in these apps. And again, we some of them we do uh, like MVVM framework. Some of them is whatever MVVM is built inside of .NET MAUI. So we are not taking a dependency on anything else. It's just how we are rendering all of our UI. So there's plenty of code uh, to kind of look through. All right, and Blazor Hybrid, everything that Ed showed off with Blazor, it all works with MAUI. Uh, again, this is nothing new. The desire to get web apps working, you know, nicely on mobile and desktop is not a new thing. We have had Electron, uh, which is, you know, battle tested. We have had PWAs, but there are certain downsides to each of them. Uh, Electron can get a little heavy handed on desktop, but if you know what you're doing, you're fine. 
uh, PWAs are great to put things quickly in the App Store, but you are running very much within a web sandbox, so you don't have access to all of the things that the platform offers. Uh, monetization can be a little difficult, so there are pros and cons, and cons to each of those. We are not here to uh, you know, uh, advise you, but we, what we are here to tell you is Blazor Hybrid is pretty cool. This is Blazor mixed in with .NET MAUI. You borrow a brand new uh, web view, uh, which is a pretty modern web view and you get the web view for whichever platform that you're running it on, iOS, Android, Windows and Mac, and it can render all things web. Uh, so Angular, React and other things are also welcome, but Blazor is particularly welcome because Blazor and Maui have the exact same runtime. So when you have a Blazor UI component that you're trying to render on .NET Maui, it's not running on the web, there is no web assembly, it's literally running on the same machine same .NET that your .NET MAUI app is running on, so you have full platform API access, great performance. So this is a win-win, and we are here to support you. If you are using any of our Blazor UI uh, for the web, uh, if you want to use that on top of .NET MAUI, we are here to support you with you know, full official support, so everything just works for you. Uh, I would love to show you this if I get a little time. Uh, so, mm -hmm. all right, let's go and look at this. So what I'm trying to show you, is if I if you head out to Terraria.com, if you look at uh, mobile com, you know components here, you get Xamarin, you get Maui, uh, and these are the apps that I just you know talked about. So go to your app stores on iOS, Android, or Windows. You're going to see these two apps, Crypto App and a Showcase uh, Control Gallery. Get those apps so you don't have to trust anything that I'm saying. Play with all the UI, and then you can see which ones work for your uh, you know code base. And while you're at it, you can also check out the source code. When you hit the big try now button, if this is new to you, we give you the source code right there. So when you do the installer, there are installers for you know uh, Mac and Windows. Uh, so let me show you what that essentially does. So if I come into my documents here, is where I keep it. I can go into my progress installations and I have, uh, you know, Teleric UI for Maui 6.3.0, that's the latest one, so you can go back in time as well. Uh, but inside of each of these, you have a few things. First is you get some binaries. Notice how we have binaries for .NET 6, 7, and 8. So you can, you know, change up and choose the runtime that you want. And then in here uh, are some NuGet packages and then there are the examples. So the control samples, uh, the crypto tracker app, and the SDK browser, they're all right there for you if you are going through the installer and getting the bits, or you can just go to GitHub and you know, check out the source code. So the advantage is when you download it, you can actually run it locally. So I have the whole control gallery here. Uh, and again, all of this is live. So I'm gonna uh, fire up a build and uh, see this working. So I chose Mac Catalyst, so I'm starting with desktop, but again, the same app works just fine on you know Android or iOS as well. It's gonna do a build uh, and come up with a desktop application. So here it goes. This is busy because it's meant to be busy. It's it's uh, it's a desktop application. So you can see all of the controls right here uh, tucked away in a hamburger menu. And you can you can have those like little updated uh, labels that you know Ed likes to show off. There are labels that are new as well. Like some of these red ones are new. So that's pretty cool. So let's look at the scheduler one here. And again, this is kind of leaning a little bit towards desktop apps because it's kind of busy, but it can work just fine on mobile as well. Because like, how often do you see a calendar with all of your appointments uh, on your mobile phone? So here's the scheduler and it's very customizable. You can do change up the view, like how much do you want to see a work week or a week or like a full month? Uh, all of that just kind of works exactly as you expect from like an Outlook calendar. You can configure a whole bunch of things about the scheduler. So, uh, you know, think about the zooming uh, so I can, you know, squish or zoom as much as I want. How long is the tick, like the time interval? When does your day start? When does your week start? What's your interaction mode? So if I switch the interaction mode to pan, now I can see, I can just, you know, move around. I can, you know, look into the next week or day and, and so on. Uh, you know, uh, today button visible and so on. So very, very customizable scheduler for all of your calendar needs. Uh, so that's just, just a quick look at the scheduler. I will show you this same thing uh, on mobile as well, but take a look at how you can see the view code right here. That shows you how to render this right inside of the app. You don't even need to have it in Visual Studio. Uh, and then it also points you to documentation if you're wanting to know a little bit more. Uh, so that's the scheduler. Let's look at the navigation view that's new. Uh, this one's a classic navigation view, like I you know, uh, mentioned. So this one here, if I tap on this, 
Uh, this is the classic you know, hamburger menu that opens up and you can control the animation. It's essentially pointing you to a different page or a view within your app. Uh, and if you look at the configuration, you can make it do whatever you want, uh, you know, have a certain header have a certain display mode, which is compact or minimal or expanded. You can say, put it on the right. You can control how much is the threshold when it you know, opens up and all types of animations. So very, very configurable uh, you know, navigation view for all of your desktop and uh, you know, mobile apps. Uh, so looking at it, more things here, let's, uh, you, know, you can see the updated views, uh, but the data grid keeps on getting more and more updates every uh, release. Uh, this one's brand new. So check this out. This is a data grid, uh, you know, with uh, a bunch of rows that you can think of, right? And I can tap on each row and have a little expansion where I can see additional details, maybe for a certain customer. Here are the orders uh, for that customer. And that's a grid by itself, but I have like a little tab view. I can see more information about that customer or the signee in this case. I can see like some shipment statuses or, a, you know, charts. Again, you go to town. This is a container. You can render whatever you want in it uh, as long as it works for your app. So think about uh, any row that you can expand and show additional contextual information. Uh, this was obviously heavily requested by a lot of our enterprise customers, and we are happy to you know, bring that over. Um, uh, row uh, details, that's it. And then header content, uh, you can actually now completely uh, you know, change the look and feel of the headers and footers with some templates. And you also have the hover support. You can do your grouping, sorting, filtering, all of those things. Uh, you know, I, I really like how feature rich, uh, you know, uh, the grid has become, not just for uh, mobile, but also for desktop. Like this is another one of my favorite ones. It's called the frozen column. Uh, notice how if my order ID is important to me, I can just freeze that and I can, you know, freeze multiple things. So when I'm scrolling and panning and zooming, I always see the thing that is important to me. So if I, you know, keep on adding more things, you can see like um, the list of things that are frozen uh, kind of grows. And then as I scroll, the thing that I have frozen never actually moves. So a lot of very, you know, desktop friendly features here with the grid. So take a look at all of this UI. I don't uh, need to, or have the time to go over all of that. Uh, like I said, the PDF viewer now gets, uh, you know, a wonderful uh, search functionality. Uh, you can see how uh, this looks like the search is right there now. It's integrated in the toolbar. If you want to bring in just a really, really large PDF, like through a streaming, we can handle all of that. You can see how big this, you know, file would be. Uh, you know, you can open, share, uh, you know, all of that menu is also up in the toolbar. Uh, you can configure things. So, you know, if you wanted a really robust PDF viewer that just works across iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac, you know, here you go. And then if you want to edit uh, any of that PDF, we can talk about that as well, because that's a separate library that does all of it. And then it benefits all of our uh, UI suites. So a lot of good things here in the Mavi suite. So take a look at this. This is clearly you know, the way forward for us in terms of, you know, cross-platform .NET development, a lot of updates to the combo box and different types of editors as well. So take a good look at this. Uh, and if I can just like switch this around here while I'm on this, uh, let's change this up to uh, a mobile form factor here. And I don't have REPLs like, uh, like Ed does for web. So I actually have to pull up simulators and emulators. Uh, it's a simulator here. Uh, Oh, it for some reason didn't like that build. Let's try one more time. Uh, so this depends on what you're trying to do. Maybe you have an Android simulator that's your favorite. Maybe you are on Windows. Uh, then you can use the iOS simulator, you know, the one that you get on Windows as well. Uh, or if you have a Mac handy, then you can, you know, go to, essentially these are native apps. So there is no getting around the fact that we know we need to go talk to Xcode do a build and come back. So same exact app that you saw on, on desktop, now it is very mobile friendly. All of your UI is right there. And if I you know, take you to the scheduler, uh, it's gonna look very much like a mobile first view. If this is exactly what you hope to get on your mobile calendars and it just works. All of your appointments, uh, everything that's special for you, it just all works right there. Uh, and the same goes with your know, navigation view and you know, data grids, they're all customized. Uh, so that you get that mobile first experience. So if I, uh, again, you can see how, how many features that the, the grid here has. If I go into the row details thing, again, it was meant for desktop, but now the same thing that, you know, popping up and showing you additional context that also works on mobile. Um, so 
uh, you can run this all day long and, and check this out. Uh, if I can show you a little bit of code here just to show you how easy these things are. Uh, let's close a few things here and I know my resolution is too small so I am going to make this a little bigger and then let's uh, go into a specific example here. Let's look at the uh, the scheduler. Uh, if I can find it, there it is. And here's the first loop example. Take a look at the view model. So it is MVVM first, uh, but we're not using any other framework here. I'm going to bump up my uh, fonts here. Uh, take a look at this collection of appointments. So an appointment is essentially, uh, you know, it's a class that lets you have those appointments that you want to throw on the calendar. You fill this up and then we're adding a whole bunch of dates uh, and appointments. Uh, there is a recurrence frequency that you want maybe on the appointments or the meetings and you set all of that up and then in your SAML, it's just one line of code, right? Scheduler, and you bind it to an appointment source and that's it. The time ruler moves by itself and your appointments. Uh, if you want to customize those with some special styles of templates, you know, have at it. But you know, a full-on scheduler is now ready for you to use. And then the navigation view. Uh, look how easy it is. Uh, if I look at the first loop example here, uh, it's just uh, you know one uh, navigation view right here. And within that, you can have any number of tabs, and you can data bind these things. They're all you know bindable properties. So if you want to have com something completely dynamic, you can. And then you can point to certain uh, you know pages uh, when you click on something, uh, and you know have all of your customizations kind of go along with you. So everything that we do with that in Maui, it's all in here. So you can scroll through and take a look at all of the you know UI controls. We do use some behaviors, we do use some converters. So it's a very real world app that's in the stores. And if you want to get inspired by how we render some of our UI. Uh, check out the source code. And the same goes with the crypto app, uh, which is actually a wonderful example of how to, you know, render things the same between the same views between mobile and desktop, but yet have different user experiences. Because now on a desktop, you have more real estate, so you can bring some views closer together and, you know, uh, work with that. Uh, so good stuff all around here with uh, .NET MAUI. And uh, since I have Visual Studio open here, I'm gonna show you one quick thing before we move off Maui, and that is the Blazor hybrid thing that you know all of you were asking with, uh, with Ed. Uh, so this is a .NET Maui app with the Blazor template, and our Blazor UI is squarely meant for web apps, but there is nothing stopping you. If you look at uh, the CS Proj here, it is a CS Proj that understands the SDK, the Razor style pages, and I can bring in uh, Telerik UI for Blazor as uh, as a Nougat package. This one's probably a little bit old here. Uh, this is Blazor 4.5, I'm sure like it's 4.6 or so now, but I can bring in Telerik UI for Blazor. Just a little bit of configuration here, I can have some import statements that bring in our Blazor namespaces. Uh, in my Maui program.cs, which is how our you know, Maui app bootstraps, uh, I will have the add Telerik Blazor, which is the same extension method that you use for you know, web apps as well. In my index HTML, I'm going to bring in some JavaScript and some CSS dependencies, just a little bit that I need. And that's about it. So in my main layout.razor, I'm just going to wrap it optionally in a Telerik you know, root component base so I can render some of the pop ups uh, a little bit better. And then if you look at my index.razor, this is just a razor page, exactly how Blazor runs on top of Maui, except in here it's not just the regular Blazor components, it's all of the Teleric stuff. Uh, they all just work. So if I run this really quick on a Mac, uh, you can get the same experiences on, uh, uh, on iOS or Android as well. But here's a desktop app or a mobile app showing all types of you know, uh, web UI that's powered by Blazor. And if you look at some of these, uh, you know, the, the calendar dropdowns here, that is a desktop first look. But with that adaptive mode, you run this on uh, an iOS or an Android device, you get that full screen pop up to choose your calendar uh, date. So, you know, all of these things that Blazor is doing for web, it just kind of helps us out uh, when you, you know, think about your cross-platform strategies. So Teleric Blazor for, uh, uh, you know, uh, UI for Blazor, it's meant for web, but you can, you know, very happily bring it over to uh, mobile and desktop as well. Okay, uh, I got a whole bunch of other things to cover. So why don't I switch gears back and, uh, talk about a few more things here. Let's uh, go back here and see where we left off uh, with Maui. Uh, we talked all about Maui. Let's talk about Xamarin here a little bit uh, as well. 
So let's go full screen here. Okay, UI for Xamarin. This is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because like uh, we spent a good six, seven years of engineering on this. So uh, all of that is not going away anywhere because like we have been reusing and bringing over that engineering uh, into .NET MAUI. But if you are on Xamarin, uh, yes, there is a, you know, uh, writing on the wall, there is a timeline, uh, but hopefully you are still able to run your apps just fine. Uh, the, the problem is some of the iOS dependencies, you know, post Xamarin um, ending its support in May of 2024, you're going to see some of the iOS, uh, you know, versions not be supported as much. So the time is now for you to consider moving off uh, Xamarin and onto uh, .NET MAUI. But again, if you have been on Xamarin, hopefully you have been productive seamlessly between Windows and Mac, uh, lots of goodies, easy ways to get started. Uh, lots of sample apps in the stores, and there's a lot of guidance now in terms of plotting your migration to .NET MAUI. And I wanted to showcase, like, these are some of the sample apps that you can get for Xamarin in the app stores. Like, you go and search, you're going to see some of these, like the ERP and the CRM apps. We have actually taken the stab of taking a full-blown Xamarin app and moving it over to .NET MAUI. Uh, most of it should be easy. Some uh, UI components, like it's a renderer versus a handler, so you want to be using the latest and greatest in terms of switching over. It's a couple of libraries, a couple of namespace changes. It's you know not so easy at times, but also not that difficult. There are some tooling upgrades that kind of the upgrade assistant helps, and then our stuff uh, is really flexible as well. So there is a lot of help. Now, uh, I'm going to mention one more quick thing here. So, and this is the beauty of modern.NET. You have a lot of flexibility and choice, right? So if you look at what's coming from .NET and the Microsoft Teams, it is .NET MAUI. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are other options like Avalonia. There are other options like Uno Platform, uh, which have kind of forked off and done their own things uh, with .NET. And if you are really, you know, married to the WinUI style of XAML, then maybe Uno Platform is your choice. So Uno Platform had a release, uh, I think a month or so back, which was wonderful. It was their 4.1.0 release. And Uno Platform is essentially taking WinUI XAML cross-platform, making it work on iOS, Android, uh, Windows, and Mac, and WebAssembly as well. So there are big fans of Uno Platform for sure, uh, particularly if you're coming from like a Silverlight background and you want to stick to your web uh, you know, uh, platform, then Uno Platform is a good choice for you. Now, they did something in their last release, which is really interesting. It's called .NET MAUI Embedding. Uh, they are wanting it to be more you know, open for .NET developers to bring in whatever they are bringing in. So that includes .NET MAUI UI as well. So you can, within a shell of a Uno platform app, you can now render all types of, you know, .NET MAUI UI, which means now you can render all of Telerik UI for MAUI just inside of Uno platform app. And there are lots of demos and sample code out there that showcases rendering all of Telerik UI for .NET MAUI inside of a Uno platform app. So if Uno platform is the thing that you're doing, you know, have at it. You can also enjoy all of Tiller here from Maui inside of Uno platform. All right, Ed, anything that I should pause for? Um, I think we, we just had, you know, some general questions like uh, how should, or what should I choose? Uh, you know, native, mobile, blazer hybrid, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, and what, and maybe is wanna... blazer hybrid just a Maui thing or can you do that? some other way yeah how about i cover a little bit more of the desktop and then towards the end let's have an open discussion um, on you know some of the strategies that you can take sounds all good. right let's let's talk about desktop you know the thing that runs your business right so double check to make sure you're all awake right uh, quick poll here Again, you have a lot of choices with desktop, right? And that's not a bad thing until we developers get a little crippled sometimes to you know, select which one is the best thing for us, which one should I stick to? Well, the answer is it depends and it, you can mix and match things fairly nicely. But again, they all come with their own you know, stack of pros and cons a little bit, mostly pros. But if you were to build a desktop app today, uh, or maybe you're maintaining one, uh, where are you at? Are you in WPF? Are you in WinForms? Are you in WinUI? Or are you latest and greatest with .NET MAUI? So if you are building a new one or if you are maintaining a new, uh, an existing one, what desktop apps are you building and with what? Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, this is interesting. And 
I, I suppose not that surprising, but it's interesting. Now he's picking up that. some steam here. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's that is good because it it's clearly is the you know way forward for uh, you know .NET cross platform. But again, quite a bit of you are in you know WPF or WinForms land. So let's let's talk about you. And WinUI is kind of in the same boat. Like if you're doing WinUI, you're essentially doing what Maui is doing anyway. So that's not much of a difference. Uh, but let's talk about WPF and WinForms and what that uh, means for you. All right. So let's start with WinUI. This is the latest UI and UX stack from Microsoft for all things Windows. Okay. And again, we have been on this journey from the get-go, from the early days where they started WinUI 3. It's meant to be native Windows UI. It's meant to also be for UWP and Win32 style SDKs or you know APIs. Uh, it has taken us a lot of engineering. The latest uh, one that we are on is version 2.8.0 runs out on top of the latest Windows app SDKs and all of the benefits that you get out of Windows, uh, you know, when UI, you have it, you know, latest design systems, MVVM accessibility support, document processing support, all of it. And this is a UI suite for us. It just grew up so quickly. It's like your beloved child and you, you know, don't even see the years go by. It's just taken us no time to be completely uh, a full suite for all the things that enterprises need, like grids and charts and schedulers, different types of maps and graphs, gauges, uh, ribbon views, all of it, it's just right there for you to use. Uh, you know, we have really grown up a lot uh, with the WinUI suite. Now, one thing that it was missing, something that we had in, you know, Xamarin or Maui uh, that we, in, in the past, now we are very happy to bring it to WinUI, it's what we call conversational UI. You know, think about how popular AI or bots and chat, uh, you know, applications are these days. Uh, think about all the chat GPT and all the, you know, different types of backends that you can power your AI uh, powered, you know, chat solutions with. It, it really cuts down on the, you know, time that somebody uh, from your support team is having to do or any of the automated things that can be achieved without a human being spending a time uh, you know, trying to walk somebody through. So that should almost always be your first line or defense when it comes to any type of chat with us type application. So we are here to enable all of your chat UI with all of the modern interactions that you want. So expect all the things that you don't have out of the box when you're trying to build a chat uh, UI, uh, you know, from scratch, different types of cards. Maybe it's just a, uh, you know, a heavy visual with some, you know, hotel, uh, you know, views. Uh, maybe it's a set of pickers where you're just let it. So the thing with chat is you do not want your users to be typing a whole lot, right? That's the whole point. It's just quick, 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 as quickly as you can. To, so give them the suggestions, give them the pickers, give them a date picker, give them a drop down list as quickly as you can to get them going on their journey. So we don't care about what AI backend you use. Uh, you can style it however you want. So it really helps you replace a lot of that form or wizard style UI with the intuitive conversational UI. So chat UI is here for you for, uh, for all of your Win UI needs. And let's talk about uh, WPF and WinForms here. This slide, Ed, I really like being an old man to just see how, you know, how far we have come. And uh, Telerik UI for WPF and WinForms started exactly where WinForms and WPF had, and we will always have support for .NET Framework, 3.1, 6, 7, .NET 4 ARM. But here we are on .NET 8, at the cusp of .NET 8, we are at release candidate 2. We will likely have one more release candidate before .NET 8 is released in November. And our WPF suite, our WinFrom suite, you know, 15 years, 20 years old, works seamlessly on .NET 8 RC2. Now that's something to be said about, you know, how, you know, portable these platforms are and how productive developers have been. So again, be at peace. You can run your latest, uh, or you can run your WPF and WinForms on the latest uh, .NET runtimes, which is quite amazing to me. Uh, let's talk about WPF and what some of the goodies are. This is something you're kind of seeing all over from us, uh, especially on the web, and you're kind of seeing it on the desktop as well, because it just makes sense. You know, anytime you're handling images uh, compared to JPEGs or PNGs, SVGs are just so much better because uh, it's high fidelity. It doesn't, you know, care as much about resolutions. So here we have a, you know, uh, an image container that can render all types of SVGs 
with full fidelity with all of the bells and whistles and all of the configurations you can think of, animations and different ways of rendering it. So stretch it to a huge uh, canvas or you know, switch it down to an icon. We don't care. And your SVGs should not uh, as well. So SVGs are here uh, for WPF. We have a brand new highlight text block. Now this is a unique control that you can use just by itself but it makes so much more sense to use it with some other input editor. So think about it when you're starting to type and you have a list of options like in a suggestion box or an autocomplete box, you want that uh, thing that you're typing that the user is typing to be highlighted. So you tell the user, this is why I'm offering you this suggestion because it's matching a certain highlighted thing. So that's what this is for. And I will you know, show you a quick example of how that works. Uh, we have more and more enhancements all throughout, just you know, pointing out a couple of uh, big ones. We have a mapping UI, which is super flexible. Like WPF, uh, Telerik UI for WPF is probably close to like 200 plus UI components. And each of them have so much of variation, like the mapping itself has just so much of richness to it, bring in whatever providers you want. So we have a brand new Azure uh, service provider and you can use it with vector uh, or you know raster resources very very customizable you can draw different types of layers on top of it uh, you know like traffic or whatever it is that you want so very very customizable the demo apps these are very popular for winforms wpf and you know uh, winui or uwp uh, we have completely redone the demo app uh, which looks very fresh and modern uh, you know kind of showcases the windows 11 theme so you can also build this in in your app as well so that's a that's a new redone uh, redesign on the demo app. All right, uh, WinForms. This one, um, you know, like Ed mentioned, like web forms and WinForms. This is kind of where we began. It's so nice to see these things run just uh, just as nicely on the modern .NETs today. So WinForms gets uh, two things that we did with WPF last release. Uh, we're just bringing it over to WinForms because it just makes sense for you know desktop apps. So there is a new pips pager. Essentially, it's a pip is essentially those little dots that you see. Think about a wizard where you're just paging through. So those are essentially glyphs that are called pips, and um, it just uses some navigation buttons. But uh, we have those little glyphs, and you essentially you have navigation buttons to move front and back. It's very easy to data bind, very easy to animate. Uh, you can render it vertically or horizontally, although horizontal is probably the most prominent one. And then it works, you know, by itself, it's fine, but it works so much better with the slide view, which is the next thing we did. So think about a carousal. Think about a gallery of things, maybe with an image, maybe with just some content that you're just trying to page through. So it's just, you know, left or right or up or down. Uh, and it, it, you can navigate through, you know, um, end to end, or you can just bring it in, in in a loop. And it just works naturally well with the pips pages. So the slide view and the pips pager, those are new to WinForms. So they're meant to engage you or engage your users in a rich, um, you know, uh, visual interface where they can just page through or maybe in a wizard form, they can just see where they're going. So those two are new. There's a brand new notify icon UI. This is something again we did for, uh, you know, WPF last release, which is bringing it over because it makes so much sense on desktop. So from within your app, you should be able to trigger something that shows up as an icon on your Windows taskbar. And once you have that, it's again a container. Within that, you can do whatever you want. So there you can you have tooltips, you can have customer interactions, maybe you can have a, a link or a menu, you can right click, you can have a balloon. So all types of things you can do from within a notification window. Uh, and you can actually do all of this within a design with a design time experience as well. So that's pretty nice. So notification icon and the UI that goes with it, that's now ready for you in WinForms. All right, and now before I actually show you some of this stuff, it's uh, Ed and me like to mention this. We have a whole separate library of things called document processing. This is just something that runs on .NET, modern .NET. So what you see here benefits our entire UI suite. So anything from web, mobile, and desktop, they all benefit. What it is is a mechanism for you to be able to manipulate, create, and you know edit or share and upload all types of office style documents and so PDFs, think about words, think about spreadsheets and be able to zip up files and, and, and work with them. So there are you know five big things built into this PDF processing, word, spread stream. Spread stream is for those really gigantic spreadsheets that you want to handle, zip libraries. So all of the benefits that you get here 
uh, are for every UI suite. So every release, we keep on doing a lot of things for document processing, and that's what benefits Blazor and Maui and Ajax and WPF and WinUI. They all use the same document processing library. So if your enterprise workflows need document processing, you know, look no further. We have done all the engineering over the years to make this as robust as we can. All right, uh, 12 minutes left. Let's take a look at this. So uh, I am a little spoiled with choices here. Uh, let's do a little connect here. So Ed is our Windows uh, person. I am still on a Mac as my primary OS, but I do love Windows just as well. So there is my Windows machine. We are actually looking at my Windows box that's sitting under my uh, desk and just remote it into it. Okay, so let's start with um, Maui one more time. Because uh, I showed you the Maui app uh, on, you know, uh, on Android and iOS and uh, Mac. This is the same app on on Windows, and everything just works. Uh, here's the scheduler view one more time. Everything works on Windows as you expect. So nothing new here. It's the same app as you can see that you know, I had run for Mac or uh, iOS or Android. So same app that just runs everywhere. Now for the other ones. You can download uh, the binaries, or you can actually go and search, uh, just the way I have done here. Uh, let's do uh, Teleric here. And if you do a search, you can see all of those apps that I mentioned, they're right there. All of the Xamarin apps, all of the Maui apps, and uh, also the WPF apps and the WinForms app, they're all right there for you to just check out. So download and play around with it. So let me show you a little bit of the WPF app first. So this one is the redesigned one. Uh, like I said, uh, we have had this, uh, we, we call this the QSF, which is the quick solution uh, guide. So uh, the window here is actually very big because I'm on a, um, a big multi-screen monitor. So let's make this as big as, or small as we can. There you go. So this is completely fresh, uh, looks nice and clean with the Windows 11 theme. And it just shows you all of the UI that we have. So let's go look into some of the newer things here. You can see the updated uh, tags. And then if I look at the data visualization here, here's the map UI. Again, take a look at just how much we offer with maps, just a variety of things that we have with maps that you can do. Think about like an airline seating chart or a hotel room or like a stadium type seating. You can do all of those things with the map. Now, the nearest thing here is uh, let's see, where is, uh, where is the Azure one? I'm scrolling too fast. Uh, there's the Azure one. So Azure map providers, raster or vector graphics, it's all done here for you. You can see, again, you can switch up whichever backend that you want to use. And the nice thing here is if, uh, if you wanted to look at the source code, yes, you can download the sample, open it up in Visual Studio, but right inside of this app here, you get to see the source of how we are rendering this. So let's you know, bump this up a little bit here. There's our Azure Map Provider, works with vector or raster graphics, like I said. Now let's look into the interactivity here. Uh, let's look at the highlight text block. Uh, like I said, this one is really fine by itself, but works so much better when it's something uh, like uh, an autocomplete box. So here, if I start uh, you know, typing in, like if I start D, you can see like all of these options that are being presented, it's highlighting the D because that's what I typed on, right? Here, uh, you can see I have a you know combo box here, but as I start uh, typing, you can see that it starts to highlight exactly the thing that I'm uh, trying to do. So you get the idea. It's just a way for you to highlight and show the user exactly why you're finding a match. So that, that's really yeah, you know nice. SVG images. Uh, this is you know here to stay because SVGs are so flexible. Here are a couple of SVGs that we are rendering. You can see that I can you know change up. Uh, the icon size. I can change up the background color. Uh, I kind of like the light ones here, so I'm going to switch back to light. But you can see this is the benefit of having, uh, you know, an SVG. I can switch up the, uh, you know, color. I can switch up how much this is zoomed, and I never ever lose fidelity. And again, this is fully, you know, configurable for you uh, on how exactly you want to render the, your SVG. What's your stroke width? What's your, you know, overriding color? Uh, size type, all of that. So bring in your SVGs, render it uh, to your heart's content. Um, so yeah, that's a quick look at some of the things with WPF. Uh, again, you can see a lot of the updates here with combo box and autocomplete box, but those were a couple of the you know bigger ones. So let's switch gears now to um, this one here, which is WinUI. So uh, this one here is up to uh, 2.8.0. Uh, so that's our big release. And you can see the big chat uh, UI right there, highlighted in new. So again, the UI for this is not gonna look any different from what we have done for 
let's say WPF uh, or you know Xamarin or uh, or .NET Mali in the past because it's the same thing. So it's just kind of try, trying to walk you through a travel agency here. I have a family type vacation coming up. Uh, you can have those little dot dot dots as somebody is typing. When do you want to go? Uh, so that's the, your calendar right there. So it's just so much easier for the user to just you know pick something rather than uh, having to type it in. And then for how long is your vacation? That's ten days. Uh, how many people? So I can actually type in. It's just going to be Ed and me this time for for my next vacation. Where do you want to go? Go to Spain. And uh, this is where you kind of see the cards view, right? So very rich you know user interface with some images with some additional context and the user just gets to choose one and then you're done then you can you know choose your flights and so on so think about anywhere where you can automate things with the chat ui this is the place to start we don't care about what chat ai backend you are using as long as you need some ui we are here to provide you all the things uh, that your chat uh, you know interactions need out of the box so that's uh, win UI and let me sh uh, show you the WinForms thing as the last thing. Uh, this one's just using the uh, sample from the store. Uh, so this is uh, R3 2023. Uh, so you can see that this is the latest one. And again, if I look into the pips pager here, uh, the first look, again, all of the source code is also right there for you. You can look at it in C Sharp or VB. Uh, so here's the classic look and feel. I can, you know, scroll through, think of a wizard, think about stepping through the user through like a carousal type view. All of it is right there. And if I, you know, kind of, so this is the pips pager by itself. And it's, it's a placeholder. You can use it with whatever content that you want, but it's just so much better with the slide viewer. So think about it like uh, in a carousal where you have a you know, rich visual interfaces and you're just scrolling through. And this can also be configured. So if you want that, you know, to be vertical, you can do that too. You can go end to end or loop. Uh, so you can do all of that. And here's the notification icon thing here. So I'm going to start this up and I'm going to just say, open a notification icon, just tap on that once. And down here at the bottom, hopefully you can see at the bottom of my screen right there is my notification uh, from Windows. So it's enabled and uh, integrated inside of the Windows taskbar. And once I click on that, I can do links, I can do user interactions, I can do images, I can do text, whatever I want. So that's your notification icon. Uh, it's all done for you in Windows as, or WinForms as well. So the bottom line is, however you're building your Windows apps, you have a lot of choice. And hopefully you see that we are here to enable you to run your WPF and WinForms app as you always have done, but hopefully you are considering updating the runtime to a modern .NET because you can run WPF and WinForms on .NET 8 and .NET 9. So that's that's a very good story. And the same UI from us just keeps on working on modern UI, modern .NETs. And if you want to do .NET MAUI for all of your modern desktop, we are here as well, uh, enabling you all, types of, you know, all sorts of desktop functionality on top of .NET MAUI. Uh, WinUI is here to stay. We still have UWP, but again, the use cases uh, or folks using UWP are going down a little bit. WinUI is clearly the way forward, and so is .NET MAUI. So a lot of options here. And um, with that, let me get back here uh, to the deck here, and maybe we can uh, start uh, taking some of the Q&A that Ed was talking about. So Ed, anything from the web world that you want to answer? I think yeah, I think we were just going to chat a little bit about like how to choose between all of these things that we talked about today. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you my take. Okay, so um, first up, if you are in .NET, you are choosing to write .NET and not JavaScript. So that's your first branch in the road. You have chosen .NET, or maybe you have always been a .NET member. Once you're inside of .NET, it's Going to come down to what you are used to. Are you used to building web apps? Um, then ASP.NET and Blazor are much more, you know, comfortable for you to go write your web apps. If you have always done desktop or native apps, then Xamarin and WPF and WinUI, those are much more comfortable areas with C Sharp and XAML. What we are enabling and what Microsoft is enabling in, you know, with Blazor Hybrid and .NET MAUI is a nice mix and match. So maybe you have a team where I do native apps and, you know, you have another part of the team like Ed who does web apps. I can bring in some of that web goodness and embed that inside of my mobile and desktop app and not care about performance or not have to worry too much about performance. Uh, I can render all of the Telerik UI from Blazor right inside of my mobile app and expect them to be adaptive. So, you know, the world is your oyster. You've got to choose what works for you, what type of code base you want to maintain um, going forward. Does that kind of answer or do you want to add on to it? 
Yeah, I think so. And um, if if we want to get into Blazor Hybrid, um, I know the answer to this, Sam, but I want to share it anyway. Uh, the, you know, is it just Maui? Do we have to use Maui or is there oh, another? No, way no, no, that, that's actually, that's a great point. So Blazor Hybrid, and in fact, if I can um, show this off, uh, so give me just one second here. Uh, I'm going to come out of this for a second. So if we look at uh, Teleric.com, uh, right? So let's go back up here. So if you look at all of our web component suite, right? So you have all things ASP.NET. If you look at Blazor, we have a whole tab here called Blazor Hybrid because we are proud of it. We are going to stand here next to you to support you. Now, this is not just for Maui. This is also for your WPF and WinForms apps, because guess what? They also benefit as long as your WPF and WinForms can run on a modern .NET like .NET 6 or 7 or 8, you have access to that modern web view component. And that web view component doesn't care. You can bring in all types of Blazor as well as Angular and React, but that's a separate story, but Blazor very comfortably inside of your WPF and WinForms apps. So absolutely, all types of desktop apps uh, with .NET are now very welcoming of Blazor. Yeah, it's a good transition uh, point for folks that are already on one of those platforms and they want to try out some Blazor stuff. And the way that .NET is built these days, uh, you know, I showed off, you can mix and match ASP.NET, uh, you know, MVC views, Razor views, Blazor, and then you've got Blazor on the desktop through all the things you mentioned. Blazor is uh, looking pretty good these days. You can you can write it and run it pretty much anywhere. And um, you know, Maui looks really good going forward as well. If you're looking at building a new desktop or mobile application, and you're using the you know Xamarin Forms type, uh, you know, if that's your background, it seems like a great option as well. Yeah, indeed. So um, do what makes you happy. Do what works or, you know, makes sense for your app and uh, your code base. Uh, all so right. So it saves you time and makes you money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so if you want to see more of us, uh, come and hang out with us on Twitch. Uh, we are on, you know, a couple of times a week uh, mostly. And if you want to really hang with Ed and me and the rest of our crew, Come and see us next week. If you happen to be anywhere around Eastern Europe next week, or if you live in Europe, please consider coming and joining us. We are going back to our engineering HQ in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, which is an absolute beautiful uh, city. And we are bringing DevReach back probably in its 15th or 13th or uh, 14th edition of DevReach. Uh, so it's been a long uh, running conference, uh, you know, s steeped in traditions, and it's just a great time. We are bringing in speakers from all over the world, and it's just going to be an amazing time. So come and join us for DevReach if you haven't already planned to. And we'll see you there. And uh, I think with that, uh, it's a wrap from Ed and me. Uh, we really, really appreciate, you know, two hours of your time. Hopefully you were able to catch most of it. And if not, you can catch up, um, you know, over YouTube uh, recordings. But our point is take a look at all of DevCraft. Take a look at not just the products that you're using, which we are, you know, every release, we are trying to give you more value so that you are more productive and more successful, but look around as well. Uh, you know, maybe you can come and join us tomorrow to take a look at reporting and testing and, and you know, network debugging. So all of it is geared towards your success and we're just here for you. All right, so Ed, any last words? Nope, I'm good. I think we, I think we about ran out the clock here, Sam. It's time to yes, say goodbye. We, we have, all right, folks. So take it easy, be well, and we'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you so much.